So far we've considered liquid-liquid equilibria and gas-liquid equilibria. Here we're going to consider liquid-solid equilibria. All right, uh, first let's uh, talk about things going into solution. So for example, we can write if we have some component, say A, uh, which is a solid, that will be in equilibrium with A, which is now solvated. Remember, if you have ions, for example, say NaCl, and that's in equilibrium with uh, Na plus, and let's put it in aqueous solution, so the solvent is water, and Cl minus aqueous. Uh, we treat this introductory chemistry level, Ksp, is a concentration of uh, sodium and the concentration of chloride minus. And that's the equilibrium constant for this reaction. And we'll go into that in a little while. But uh, let's generally take something that doesn't dissociate uh, into ions, but just sort of sits there as a solid, and then it goes into a liquid. Well, maybe we want our usual picture here. Okay, so here's our picture. Now down here we have the solid, A, and up here we have a solvent, and what A is going to do is equilibrate between the solid and the solve, uh, solvent. All right, so this is the equilibrium we're looking at. We're not worrying about dissociation or so on. In order to treat this uh, thermodynamically, we make the approximation. So if we have a solid in equilibrium with a solid in equilibrium with the compound that's solvated. What you do is approximate this as a melting. So now you have A as a liquid. So that's a pretty big approximation. We're assuming ideal solutions and everything else. But uh, let's see what we can do if we make that approximation. So A, when it's solvated up here, well, it's just like a liquid. So A would be like in a liquid mixed in with a solvent liquid. So it would be like a liquid-liquid equilibrium. So really thermodynamically what controls this is the uh, enthalpy of melting or fusion. So that's the approximation we're going to make. Now this is an equilibrium, so we can write, usually uh, make our usual assumptions that the chemical potential of A in the solid state at equilibrium is equal to the chemical potential of A in the solv or liquid state. We're using liquid as an approximation of solvation. Now let's go ahead and write down what the chemical potentials are for each one of these cases. So the chemical potential of A in the solid state is equal to the chemical potential of A in the solid state, standard state, plus RT times the natural log of the activity of A in the solid state. And what we said was we have a pure condensed phase, pure A, A is a solid, that's a condensed phase, the activity is then 1 because that's our standard state and therefore this term becomes 0. So the chemical potential of something in a solid state is just, as we expect, the standard state chemical potential in the solid state. Now let's do the same thing for the chemical potential of A in the liquid state. Well, that's the standard state chemical potential of A in the liquid state plus RT times the natural log of mole fraction of A in the liquid state. In other words, we have A here mixed in with the solvent, and what's the mole fraction of A here? That's what we mean by A in the liquid state, which is actually the solvated state. But well, we made that approximation. So what we do is we equate these at equilibrium, and we just say that the chemical potential of A in the solid state, standard state, is the chemical potential of A in the liquid state, standard state, plus RT times the natural log of mole fraction of A in the liquid state. So you might have noticed I went from activity to mole fraction. So when I went like that, I didn't write activity here. This implies the activity coefficient of A is equal to 1. So we're making this sort of bad approximation already, so we might as well make this approximation, which may or may not be as bad. All right, so there it is. Uh, let's isolate the natural log of Xa in the liquid state. That's equal to the chemical potential of A in the solid state, standard state, minus the chemical potential of A in the liquid state divided by RT. Oh, so that's an interesting uh, relation there. So where are we going here? 
Well, what we want to do is to look at the solubility as a function of temperature. So can we predict the solubility dependence of temperature? The answer is yes, but it's not a very good prediction, but we'll nonetheless go ahead and do that. So we want to know the temperature dependence, and this, of course, the mole fraction of A in the, as we denote liquid, is the solubility. So how much A goes into, into here is the uh, mole fraction of A when this is at equilibrium. Let's see how, I'll actually do one more simplification. I claim that this is minus the free energy of melting, or which is called fusion, partial molar free energy, divided by RT. Why is that? Well, the chemical potential is uh, related to, f to free energy as we expect. Remember that uh, the chemical potential is how free energy changes with the number of moles. And we give that the symbol uh, partial free energy, uh, a partial molar free energy. And the reaction we're looking at here is solid going, here we go, solid going to liquid. So that's delta G of fusion. So be the chemical potential of the products minus that reactant, liquid minus solid. But here it's solid minus liquid. So that uh, corresponds to the minus sign there. And then the difference in chemical potential is just delta G fusion over R. Okay, so with that, let's look at the temperature dependence, how the natural log of the mole fraction of this component in the liquid phase varies with temperature. Well, that's how, and I'll just look at G over T. So this is how, and I'll put the minus sign out there, how delta G of fusion divided by temperature varies with temperature, and that's divided by R. Now remember, this is the Gibbs-Hemholtz relation. We can immediately say that this is equal to delta H of fusion. I'll put that R under there, R T squared. You might re review the uh, Gibbs-Hemholtz uh, relation, where you can go from there to there. All right, so now let's uh, integrate, or let's separate the terms here. So this is how natural log of the mole fraction of A in the liquid, that is equal to delta H of fusion over RT squared, with the DT over here. So we're gonna to integrate total differential here. So let's integrate here from the melting point, there's, or the freezing point, it's the same thing, and right at the freezing point, you have pure component A, which the mole fraction is one, and therefore the log of this. So, so we're gonna integrate the log of this, where X is one, from zero to some particular value and corresponding to that temperature. So we wanna predict the temperature solubility, the temperature dependence of solubility, and we're going to reference it to the freezing point. Why is that? Well because this is the real react, this is the reaction we're approximating this reaction as. All right, so we just have on this side the natural log of the mole fraction of A in the liquid state. That's equal to, you integrate this, this is minus delta H fusion, and we probably should put a bar above that, give me a partial molar, forgot all those, over R, one over T minus one over the freezing point. So this says that uh, the solubility of A in a solvent is uh, expressed as log of the mole fraction is proportional to the enthalpy of fusion. So if you, it takes a lot of energy to pull apart something to melt it, then, because it's minus sign here, you're not going to get as much in solution. That's where that equation comes from. And again, you know, the key point here is that at equilibrium, chemical potential of two things that are in equilibrium are equal.